Hey YouTube, Spider004 here. A project that I've had on the back burner for a very long time now has been completed with the help of many talented people. What is that project? Well, it's an improved version of my old tank aiming chip. So what is the difference between this new chip and the old chip? Well, first off, it is less laggy. The old chip would run at a CPU time of around 500 to 800 US, while this chip runs at a CPU time of around 300 US. So it is about half as laggy. It is also much more accurate. You should not notice gun wobble unless you are driving and fully zoomed in. There is a smooth tracker on this chip. The tracker will no longer bounce around even when on servers. It will be completely smooth and track fine with the gun. Uh, it's fully customizable. I didn't leave anything out that you can't customize. Uh, it has a clean UI and it's just all around better. So how do we customize this chip? Well first off I would recommend that you make sure your video is in 720p so that you can read the text that I am explaining. The first and probably the most confusing thing that we can customize is the zoom. It has three values, change, minimum, and maximum, and it works by modifying the player's field of view. In this chip, our maximum field of view, or fully zoomed out, is 90. Our minimum field of view, or fully zoomed in, is 20. Our change is 35. Change is the amount the field of view changes per mouse scroll click. So, for example, if we were fully zoomed out at 90 and we scrolled up once, that would be zooming in. So it would subtract 35, leaving us with 55. If we scrolled up again, we are at 55, it would subtract 35 again and leave us with 20. It's important that these numbers line up like this. Your change should always get you from your maximum to your minimum. It's important to note that you need to put the maximum value in two separate places if you decide to change it. There is the first one on line 22, uh, the last number where it says max, and on line 26 it'll say FOV equals, and then you put the number there too. There's text to tell you to do this, but I felt it was important to mention. Next we can customize the HUD and the aimer color. It's pretty simple, it's just three numbers which correspond to red, green, and blue. The HUD and aimer color are both uh, different kinds of blue right now, but if you wanted, say, a red HUD, you could do 200, comma, 0, comma, 0, and it would make the HUD red. You can change the aimer color too, so... Uh, if you wanted a green aimer, you would do 0, comma, 200, comma, 0. Um, the next thing we can customize is elevation and depression. That is how high and how low the gun can aim in degrees. And then we have yaw, which is how far to the left and the right the gun can aim. So 180 degrees to the left and the right would make a full circle. That means you can aim all the way around. If you had a tank destroyer that you only wanted it to be able to aim 15 degrees to the left and the right, you would put 15 in, not 30, 15. It's because it's how far to the left and the right. Rotate speed is an arbitrary number. What I mean by that is it just tells the, the chip how much force to apply. So if you have a rotate speed of 15 on a, on a really light gun and a, a 15 on a really heavy gun, they'll rotate at different speeds because it's applying the same force to both. Uh, you just kind of need to play with it. If you go too high, the gun can spaz. So if it's spazzing, lower that number down. But you can get really low rotation speeds if you're going for historical accuracy. It'll, it'll do a degree per second if you want. Cam distance is how far away the camera is from the pivot point, and cam offset is where the pivot point originates, and I'll explain that when I actually wire up a tank. Uh, this concludes me explaining how to customize it. If you go below this and modify any of the stuff down here, I would really recommend that you don't unless you are uh, experienced at E2, so probably not touch that. Next I'm going to wire up one of my older tanks just so that you can see how to do it so that you have an example to go by. I'm just going to remove these props. Makes it easier. I'm going to spawn all new props too. Alright, the first thing you will need is a pod controller. 
and you are going to want to right click that right click your seat and then you are going to need a cam controller and it is important that the settings be correct on the cam controller if they're not your camera is going to be messed up you're going to leave me a comment and I'm going to tell you that this is wrong you need to just have client side movement checked nothing else don't well it doesn't matter if you put draw player or not but if you do like client side zooming or localized movement or coordinates local to parent it's going to mess the chip up just have client side movement checked and I have the smooth speed at 18 but you could modify it if you if you find that your camera is buggy so just client side movement checked don't check the other ones so you right click the cam controller then you right click your seat then you get out an EGP V3 controller and it is important to note that this is a screen type HUD it is not a screen it is not an emitter it is a HUD and then you right click that and you right click the seat and then you get out your chip probably should have done that a while ago uh, I believe the last chip it mattered which way it was facing uh, like it had to be facing forward or something but this one it doesn't you can face it whatever direction now we're going to wire it uh, I've learned that you can wire multiple things at once so we're going to hold shift and click we're gonna hold shift the entire time that we do these four we're going to click active scroll down click next weapon scroll down click previous weapon scroll down click pod wire link you can see how they're all blue that means we're wiring all of them then if you hold alt and click you'll see that these are green click again we just wired all four at once cam wire link goes to the camera EGP wire link goes to the EGP gun entity goes to the gun base entity goes to your base plate not your turret base but your actual base plate chair entity goes to your chair and it should actually work at this point and then we'll modify it to so that it's right you can see it's it's nice and happy I'm fully zoomed in right now so we got a couple problems uh, one the camera is not centered on the center of the turret which is something I like to do and the cupola gets in the way so let's center it in the chip we are going to go down to uh, line 65 which is cam offset the first number is forward and back the second number is left and right the third is up and down so the first number is how forward or backwards it is from the, the parent prop and the last number is how far up or down you wouldn't mess with left or right very much unless you made an off-center gun like a, like an M3 tank destroyer or something this is 19.5 right now because I had it modified for another tank I'm gonna put it to zero and see what happens we're too far forward right now it brings us back a little bit so we need to go back further I'm gonna try negative 15 uh, something wonky about forward and backwards positive isn't always forward sometimes negative will be forwards depending on which way your base plate is facing so that's dang near centered but uh, it's not exactly centered and I like to get it really close so I change it to 14 and that's that's pretty center but our cupola is still blocking our view so I'm going to change the up down value to be farther up it's 100 now I'm changing it to 125 there we go that's better I like it so that everything else disappears when I'm fully zoomed in so that just raised our point up and I will show you what distance does I'm just going to it's 200 right now I'm going to increase it to 500 just like you wouldn't use that value normally but just showing you what it does see how far out the camera is now 
like it, it it makes the camera spawn farther out from that pivot point that we moved. I'm gonna put that back to 200. Uh, let's let's make our our yaw 30 just so I can I can show that, uh, and I'll change our aimer to red. It's 0, 0, 0200 right now. I'm changing it to 200 0, 0. So I can only yaw 30 degrees to either side with that, and my aimer is now red. Like I said, pretty pretty simple to modify. Uh, I tried to make it as simple as possible, and uh, that's all I really have to show for this. Uh, thank you to everyone that helped work on this chip. I could not have had it done without... I, there was like 10 people that worked on this, and they all contributed their own um, special co contributions that made the chip better. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy using this chip. Uh, it probably won't get updated for a while because it's, it's been worked on for a very long time and I don't think I'll have anything better for a good long while. Uh, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe if you feel like it. And thank you for watching and have a good one.